Hello, you're welcome to the Department of Oncology and Medical Radiology of the Dnipropetrovsk Medical Academy of the Ministry of Health of Ukraine. And the topic of our lecture is Diagnostic Imaging of the Chest. That lecture will demonstrate to you the main methods of medical imaging of pulmonary diseases and also the main pathological syndromes which you will describe while studying that topic. What are the main imaging techniques for imaging of the chest? They are plain radiography. It may be routine and special. The methodics of plain radiography are fluoroscopy with and without contrast bronchography, it is also the pulmonary angiography and bronchial arteriography and tomography. We also have other methods, CT scanning, MRI, scintigraphy, the same as isotope studies, and ultrasound. On this slide you can see equipment for medical imaging. MRI, ultrasound, equipment for densitometry, X-ray machine, and also CT scan. X-ray imaging. It has non-contrast methods, fluorography, X-ray imaging, fluoroscopy, and linear tomography. The contrast methods of imaging of the chest are bronchography, angiopulmonography, fistulography, etc. And general functional methods are Valsalva and Müller functional tests. This slide demonstrates us X-ray imaging in negative view when the bones are in a white color it means it is negative when the bones are black it is positive you'll see it on other slide so what do we see we see X-ray of the chest in the direct view and also X-ray of the chest in lateral view Here we see X-ray image of the chest in the direct view, which is in positive. The bones are in black color and gas is in white color. Fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy is one of techniques of X-ray imaging. It is examination in a real time and it is used for studying the structure and functions of respiratory organs. This slide demonstrates such a technique as fluoroscopy. Fluoroscopy is examination in real time. On this slide you can see how the hemisphere of diaphragm moves, how the heart beats, so you can understand that it shows for us not only the anatomy, but also the function of the chest. Bronchography is used for revealing morphological changes of bronchi, abnormalities of the development, bronchoctasis and bronchial fistula. Angiography is a special technique of X-ray method. It is a contrast study of lung vessels. It is indicated in the suspicion of thromboembolism of the lung artery, abnormality of pulmonary artery development. When we want to compare two X-ray films without the contrast agent and with the contrast agent, we see the difference. Here is X-ray image without the contrast agent, and here the contrast agent is in vessels. Another technique, linear tomography, is used for studying the structure of pathological formation, state of trachea, large bronchi, lung roots, and mediastinum. Here is the image of central lung carcinoma. What do we see? We see like a frontal slice of our patient with the trachea, its place of bifurcation, and the left main bronchi is clear, 
instead of its right is blocked with tumor. And also we see the absence of gas in the right lung. Another method is CT. It is a computer tomography. Here we see the scans of the chest in axial view. Here they are axial slices, which are the main in CT. And also in coronal view, frontal slices. Here are two windows where we can see lung tissue and also soft tissues. We will change the option according which structures we are describing this time. CT is used for studying the structure of a pathological process, is spreading over adjacent organs and differential diagnosis of lung diseases. It shows us differentiation of pulmonary vessels, bronchi lymph nodes of the thoracic cavity. Spiral CT enables to get information of the nature of changes in vessels of the chest region. Ultrasonography. Ultrasound is used for studying the heart, other organs of mediastinum, pleura, diaphragm, superficial areas of the lungs, pathological contents in the pleural cavity, for revealing the integrity of ribs. Ultrasound doesn't reach the depth of the pulmonary parenchyma. What do we see here? We see the normal right upper quadrant, it's a pleural examination. We see diaphragm, liver, kidney, and a part of lung. On the other image, we see pleural fluid, which is visible in sinus of lung. Here is diaphragm, part of spleen. What can we do using ultrasound? We can even measure the volume of the fluid which is in the pleural sinus. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI is used mainly for visualizing pathological formations of mediastinum and pulmonary roots, damages of the thoracic cage, revealing and characterizing diseases of vessels. Methods of nuclear imaging. When should we do this examination? In a case of the suspicion of the pulmonary embolism, lung carcinoma, disturbance of pulmonary blood circulation. Here we can see the method of palmoscintigraphy. And also we can compare it with SPECT CT images here. A wedge shaped pleural based large mismatched perfusion defect is seen arteriorly in the left lung. Here it is. On the axial upper row, coronal row, and sagittal lower row projections. No other explanations for perfusion defect can be seen on the normal ventilation scan and low dose CT images. Here is the scheme for lung segments. How it looks like when we want to describe it on CT. Also like a scheme for the doctor who works on CT machine. It helps to understand where is the pathological process. What does normal chest X-ray, which is indirect U, shows us? What do we see? We see soft tissues. Here they are, muscles, bone structures, ribs clavicles, vertebras. We also see lung fields. Mediastinum. And 
diaphragm. Here is normal chest X-ray in lateral view. What do we see? We see vertebral column, hemisphere of diaphragm, shade of mediastinum, lung roots. While describing image of chest region, we can also use such a term like lung fields or lung zones. If we are not sure where is a pathological process in upper, middle or lower lobe, we can use the word zone. So, we have upper lung zones. It goes from the apex till the anterior part of the second rib on both sides. We are counting only anterior parts of ribs. They are more oblique. The posterior parts of ribs are more horizontal and they are more visible. But speaking of land zones, land fields and orientation in chest region, we will look attentively at anterior parts of ribs. We also have middle lung zone. It begins from the second rib and ends near the fourth rib in both sides. And also lower lung zone. It goes from the fourth rib till the hemisphere of diaphragm. Lung roots. Here they are. They are formed with big arteries and veins and also bronchi. Lung roots, as you know from anatomy, it is also made from lymph nodes, nerve structures, but if they are unchanged, they are not visible on simple X-ray image. Lung pattern, it is represented by a set of Arteries and veins directed radially from the roots to the peripheral parts of the lungs. We have discussed the normal anatomy of the chest on X-ray. And now let's speak about the characteristics of pathological symptom. In your books, you have page number 225, where is a description how to speak about every symptom of pulmonary pathology. It should be uh, described according to the following signs. Position, number, form, sizes, intensity, pattern, control, structure, and displaceability. So, what should we say when we will name the pathological symptom? Pathological symptom, first of all, it may be symptom of uh, pathological shadow, pathological lung pattern, and so on. When we are describing, for example, the pathological shadow, what should we do? We have to say about the position in the lungs, lobes, segments, or extrapulmonary localization. The number of shades or radiolucent areas, single or multiple. The form of shades or radiolucent areas, are they round or oval, are they with triangular shape, irregular, linear, ring-like, lens-like, and indefinite. If you are not sure that the shape of the shadow has some special geometric form, you will describe it like indefinite. The sizes of focal shades. They may be miliary, tiny, medium, and large. Uh, focal shade is uh, such a shade which has a size from 1 millimeter till 1 centimeter. So, up to 3 millimeter is miliary fossae from 4 till 5 millimeter, tiny fossae, 6 7 millimeters medium fossae from 8 till 
10 large forcing. According to the presence of shades with the size of more than 1 cm, one should point out their sizes in centimeters. The intensity of the shadow may be low when the shade is visible against the background of the pulmonary pattern. Medium, the shade is visible against the background of the frontal rib. High, after its density, the shade approaches the density of the cortical layer of the ribs and the shade of a metallic body. The pattern. The pulmonary pattern is unchanged, unreached. It may be depleted, intensified, or deformed. The contours of shadows may be distinct, indistinct, even or uneven, convex, concave, wavy, jaged, polycyclic. The structure. It can be homogeneous and non-homogeneous and displaceability in breathing, change in the body's position, in functional tests, and other. We have the list of radiological syndromes of pulmonary pathology. Here they are. The syndrome of a total or subtotal shade, syndrome of a limited shade, syndrome of a spherical shade, syndrome of a ring-like shade. Also, the syndrome of limited and spread focal dissemination, syndrome of pathological changes in the pulmonary root, syndrome of the pathological changes in the pulmonary pattern, and syndrome of the spread increase of transparency. It may be also syndrome of limited increase of transparency. Syndrome of a total or subtotal shade. What does it mean? A total shade is a shade which occupies a half of the thoracic cavity, emerges in a loss of airness by the whole lung or in accumulation of the fluid which occupies the whole volume of the pleural cavity. A total shade can accompany a total confluent crupos pneumonia, a telectasis of the lung, total exudative pleuritis, pneumo, uh, pleuropneumofibrosis of lung, undeveloped plan, and so on. First of all, let's begin with syndrome of a total or subtotal shade. But let's speak what is shade. Shade is such a formation which has the same color as bone. For example, if we are looking at that image, we see something new in black color. It is the same color as bone. So, uh, exudative pleuritis is an example of the total shade in that case. It is uh, with homogeneous high intensity shadow with oblique upper border along the demoiseau line and the mediastinal organs are displaced to the healthy side. The syndrome of total shade with a patient uh, who has central lung carcinoma. Here we have atelectasis, the most common cause of the blockage of the main bronchus by foreign body or tumor growing into the lumen of the bronchus. The radiograph shows homogeneous shadow of the entire pulmonary field of high or medium intensity. The mediastinal organs are displaced to this side with pathology. Now let's speak about central type of lung cancer, which is the main reason for atelectasis. That cancer develops from the bronchial epithelium of the first till third orders. By type of growth, it could be endobronchial, exobronchial, and peribronchial. Central lung cancer with endobronchial growth is manifested radiologically by impaired bronchial patency. In the first stage, it will be visible like hypoventilation, second stage with valvular emphysema, and the third stage, it is accompanied by atelectasis.
Here we have stages of bronchial obstruction. The first stage is hyperventilation. We see that the tumor blocks the right main bronchi and the formation of hyperventilation. After that, we see the stage of valvular emphysema when the tumor blocks not only the incoming of gas inside lungs, but also how the patient is breathing out and we see the additional amount of gas, valvular emphysema, which may be in the lung which is hurt. And the third stage is ethylectasis, when gas will not come to the blocked part of lung or to the whole lung. The syndrome of a limited shade. Another syndrome. Uh, what does it mean, limited shade? It is such a shade which corresponds by its size to a lobe segment or subsegment. A substrate of such a shade can be an inflammatory or uh, tumor infiltrate, defects of lung development, atelectasis of lobe or segment, limited pneumosclerosis, infarction of lung, conglomeration of pneumosclerotic nodules, areas of edema of pulmonary tissue, etc. It can be also extrapulmonary process, pleural exudate and commissures, hematorrhoids, diaphragmatic hernia, tumor infiltrate of pleura. Here is an example of syndrome of limited shade. Uh, the patient with pneumonia. X-ray signs of pneumonia are local decrease in the airness of the lung tissue, the contours of the darkening area except the places of the contact with interlobal pleura and visibility of the ear gaps of the bronchi in the shadow area. Another example of the syndrome of limited shade is a patient with pleuritis. X-ray film shows the patient in a vertical position, shade in the lateral costophrenic sinus and the external lower part of the pulmonary field. The upper contour of the shadow is in the form of an oblique concave line. The patient uh, has description like right-sided hydrothorax, fluid is present till diaphragm to the anterior segment of the fifth rib. Patient with encapsulated pleurisy. X-ray shows shade of a semi-spindly or semi-oval shape with white base. Here it is. It merges with the chest wall. The structure is homogeneous. The contours are clear. The pulmonary pattern in the adjacent sections is transient and second due to compression of the lungs and the convergence of the vascular branches. Another example of the syndrome of a limited shade. Patient with pleural mesothelioma. X-ray shows a limited shade with clear bumpy contours, homogeneous structure, wide base adjacent to the chest wall. It is malignant pleural mesothelioma on the left side, nodular form. Another syndrome is the syndrome of a spherical shade. Spherical shade is formation of a round form which exceeds in size of one centimeter in diameter. The basic processes for that syndrome are tuberculosis infiltrate, tuberculoma, a blocked tuberculosis cavern, silicoma, spherical nonspecific pneumonia, non-drained abscess, benign and malignant tumors, vascular malformations, cyst filled with liquid hematoma, limited interlobal pleuritis. Here is an example of syndrome of a spherical shade, acute spherical pneumonia. X-ray shows us rounded shade with smooth, usually indistinct contours, 
Light stripes of bronchi are determined against it, and lung roots are mainly dilated. The peripheral lung cancer may be also accompanied by the syndrome of a spherical shade. In early stages, it looks like a focus of inflammation with indistinct contours. When the size of tumor reaches from 1 to 1.5 cm, the tumor node has a polygonal shape. With a size of 3-4 cm, the shape is round. The structure can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. The contours are lumpy or radiant. It's a symptom of malignant crown. Here we also see images of the patient with peripheral lung cancer in left lung with the same syndrome as round shape formation in lungs. Another example of spherical shade is tuberculoma. Uh, mainly it is rounded shadow from 2 to 3 cm in size with smooth contours with the calcinated inclusions located in center like here or also it may be eccentrically. Small focal shadows are determined around tuberculoma. With an exacerbation of the tuberculosis process, a path through the root and semilunar areas of decay can be observed. If patient has echinococcal cyst, he may be also with syndrome of a spherical shade. Here it looks like an annular arcuate calcification of the membrane and also it is a syndrome of a spherical shade. Multiple round shadows in the lungs most often represent metastasis of malignant tumors. Another syndrome is a syndrome of a ring-like shade. Anatomically, ring-like shadows are characterized by cavities in lungs, which are filled by air. Examples. Gas-filled cysts, TB cavern, abscesses of a lung, tumor disintegration. If multiple, it may be polycystosis, abscessive pneumonia, and also bronchoectatic disease. Here is a picture with lung abscess. It appears as an annular shadow with indistinct inner and outer contours and level of fluid on X-ray film. The cavernous tuberculosis can be also with such a syndrome as a ring-like shade. On radiographs, it appears as an annular shadow associated with a path to the root of lung and the presence of foci of different densities along the periphery. This patient with ring-like shade, he has decaying peripheral lung cancer. The cavity has polycystic contours. Walls have unequal thickness. Another example of the syndrome of ring-like shade is single ear cyst of the Lobe, like here, that patient has single ear cyst of the upper load of the left lung. The cyst walls are thin and adjacent lung tissue is not changed. Next syndrome is a syndrome of limited and spread focal dissemination. What is foci? The foci is in duration with a size of up to 1 cm. The syndrome of limited dissemination is uh, visible like the spreading of foci within the limits of 1 to segment in one or both lungs. If foci is localized in more than two segments, then such a process is called disseminated. Example. Disseminated tuberculosis of the lungs, non-specific inflammation of lungs, areas of lung edema, pneumoconiosis, sarcoidosis, and tumors.
Here is linear tomography of focal pulmonary tuberculosis. Multiple petrified foci are determined in upper lobe of the left lung against the background of fibrosis. Another example of that syndrome is gone foci. It's a single calcification. In the right and also in left lung. As a consequence of the postponed tuberculosis process. Here it is and here it is. Syndrome of limited and spread focal dissemination. It may be also present in focal pneumonia. The X ray signs of focal pneumonia are area of infiltration of lung tissue of a heterogeneous structure consisting of polymorphic foci with fuzzy contours. Infiltration zone occupies one or more segments. Bilateral localization is common. Disseminated tuberculosis. Acute dissemination is characterized by the presence of a large number of monomorphic foci located throughout both lungs from the apex to the diaphragm and from the chest wall to the mediastinum. The lesions have regular round or oval shape, relatively clear contours and a homogeneous structure. Another example is miliary carcinosis. It's the presence of multiple small nodular shadows, often with medium intensity, mostly located in the lower pulmonary field, against which the pulmonary pattern may be not traced. Another syndrome is a syndrome of pathological changes in the pulmonary root. The shade of pulmonary root is formed by large arterial and venous vessels, partially by bronchi. Changes in the shade picture of the pulmonary root can be either independent or accompany other diseases. Inflammatory and tumorous processes, edema of its cellulose, under development of or hyperemia of vessels participating in a root shade formation. These are the examples of diseases which may be followed with that syndrome. Here are the examples of the pathological changes in pulmonary roots. Here you can see calcification in the right lung root and also increasing of the size of the left root of lung. Here also calcification and to understand that it is calcification even in uh, the place of main left bronchi. Here the enlarging of the root of lung, deforming of its structure, it is even structureless. Every time look and compare left side and right side. Here left side is normal and the right side lung root is changed. The syndrome of the pathological changes in the pulmonary pattern. The anatomical substrate of the lung pattern is presented by blood vessels, bronchial, lymphatic vessels, peribronchial and perivascular connective tissue. In norm, an image of the lung pattern in an X-ray image is formed by blood vessels. Pathology of either of enumerated elements can be the reason for a change in the lung pattern. Edema in intermediate pulmonary tissue, changed blood filling in pulmonary arteries and veins, defects of vessels and bronchi development, bronchi diseases, sclerotic induration of pulmonary strome. Intensification of the lung pattern. It will reflect stagnant changes in the pulmonary circulation in the form of an increase in the diameter of the vessels on the plane. The vessels are determined in the peripheral regions. Normally, the pulmonary pattern in the upper pulmonary field doesn't reach the periphery by one and a half till two centimeters. Verification of the pulmonary pattern. It may be with reducing the number of vascular shadows per unit area due to narrowing or underdevelopment of vascular branches. 
embolization of the branches of the pulmonary artery, congenital defects of the heart and pulmonary vessels, stenosis of the pulmonary artery, trade and trade of fellow, etc. The other example is deformation of the pulmonary pattern. It may be due to chronic diseases such as chronic bronchitis. Syndrome of the pathological changes in the pulmonary pattern is also visible here on the left side of the patient. Look attentively. Here is also the same syndrome, pathological changes in pulmonary pattern. Here is the same syndrome and we can see bronchography. Bronchography is such a method which will use the contrast agent. The contrast agent is in bronchi, in the right main bronchi system, and we see the deformation of the end parts of bronchi due to the presence of disease which has the name of the bronchoectatic disease. And the last but not the least is a syndrome of the spread increase of transparency. It is observed in pneumothorax, the free ear in the pleural cavity, the absence of the lung pattern, a distant border of the visceral pleura, or in emphysema in lungs. Emphysema of the lungs is characterized by syndrome of total and limited increase of transparency. What do we see? Increasing the transparency of lung tissue. Here is like more white than in norm. The horizontal position of ribs. Expansion of intercostal spaces. They are more white. Sternum bulge, barrel chest, and middle location of the shadow of the heart and its decrease in size. Syndrome of total and limited increase of transparency in the pulmonary field is also in such a disease as pneumothorax. What do we see? Ear in the pleural cavity in the form of band or enlightenment of right vice located in the outer part of the chest cavity. Pulmonary pattern on the background of enlightenment is absent. We don't see the lung pattern. It's not present here. It's in lung and here is gas, only gas. Collapsed lung has a form of sheet. It's located medially due to the shifting effect. Its outer contour is clear. The mediastinal organs are shifted to the healthy side. Thanks for watching. I have named to you the main principles of normal X-ray anatomy, main methods of imaging of uh, chest region, and also the main syndromes which we will use for describing chest region. You also have to read more about examination of lung diseases and see you on our studies. Stay healthy.